slam on his brakes where these cones are here. And this will give us a visual representation of how, how far it takes to stop a car once we hit the brakes with an emergency braking uh, procedure. Okay, for this first one, we'll let Cameron take it away. Cameron's first run, I think he was a bit late on the brakes there, but you can see that it, that, that it isn't that far. So the reason why it's 40 when we're, in, um, when we're around pedestrians is we can pull up the car very quickly. The next speed that we're, going to, that we're going to travel at is 60 k's an hour. This speed is more commonly found on, mo on main roads, often multi-lane roads. Uh, you'll find that there's, there's less hazards, there's less pedestrians, and crossroad collisions are often governed by traffic lights. I want you to think about the percentage difference between the two runs we just had. Okay, so we've increased our speed by 20 kilometers an hour. We've actually increased in percentages by 50%. So let's have a think about how far, how, how far the, the stopping distance will be. So if Cameron's ready, we'll get him to take it away. It, it doesn't make sense. You would assume that a 50% increase in your stopping distance would only be half of that again somewhere between where Scott is and the 40 sign. But actually, as we increase our speed, our braking distance grows exponentially. So we've increased our speed by 50%, we double our braking distance, and I'll get Scott to take down the sign to where 80 might be, which is double our speed. It's actually quadruple the braking distance. Now, Cameron, I know, needs to do some driving lessons today, and you can see that wall's getting pretty close, so he's not going to be doing 80 kilometers an hour, I apologize. So Scott's gone all the way down there, and we can see how far it would be at 80. And you can imagine how far it would be at 110, which is the, the highest speed limit we have in New South Wales. The other takeaway from this is that we're only looking at the braking component. So this is once we've reacted and seen and reacted to something that's on the road. We've also got to allow time for ourselves to, um, to, to react to whatever we're seeing. This is only the braking component. So for the next speed, we're going to drop back to 50. And the reason why we're doing 50 is this is the most common speed limit on our roads. It's the default speed limit. Now look out for it on your driving test. Most suburban areas are 50 yet it's not signposted. So if you can't see any, any speed signs, assume that it's 50. So this time Cameron's gonna come down again at 50, and then we're gonna do a little different demonstration. So if Cameron's ready, take it away, please. Well done. So you can see that it's more than the 40, but it's somewhere closer to the 60. So for our fourth and final run, we're going to introduce something else into the mix in. Yes, you can see our crash test dummy coming out on, on, onto the floor. assume that we're still driving in that 50 zone, the default speed limit, suburban streets, and we choose to go just 10 k's over the speed limit. Just 10 k's, most people do it, sometimes, seems alright. The consequences can't be that bad. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get Cameron to come out at 60. We put a pedestrian where he stopped at 50. Okay, so we're going to assume that someone's just stepped out in front of us. We're in a 50 zone and we've chosen to go 60. Have a think about how fast Cameron we're going when he gets to the dummy. 
All right, Cameron, at 60. Okay, so we can see that the car wasn't even close to being stopped. It's only a few metres from the 50 zone. We can see that it's only a few metres from our 50 braking area to the 60. But Cameron was still going just about 30 k's an hour at the point where he hit the dummy. He saw it go up in the air. So the, the results can be devastating. If we choose to go just 10 k's over the speed limit, the consequences can be disastrous because